in this lesson we will learn how to control the axes. Up to now we have created plots and we have just taken the default manner in which ggplot chose to show us the axes. So for example the limits that it chose for the axes, the, uh, the way in which it displayed the elements on the axes, the way in, for example in which it displayed the numbers, everything we have taken for granted as it was. Okay, so now we are going to learn how to control the axis, both the x and the y axis. The first thing, of course, is to look at the axis labels themselves. Okay, and that's very easy. Uh, there are two functions called xlab and ylab, and we can control the x axis label and the y axis label by just doing using those functions. Okay, so here we are using a scatter plot and we've got the x-axis label as city mpg so instead of just the variable name which it puts by default it would have been cty hwy instead of that we've given it a more user-friendly name and incidentally because of the fact that this plot clearly shows a lot of overplotting we threw in an alpha equals one-third to indicate the extent of overplotting but of course that has nothing to do with controlling the axis it's just a point that we used Okay, we, we already understand how this transparency works. Alpha equals one third basically says that uh, if you put three of those points one on top of the other, then you will get back the full original color. Otherwise, it will be light. Okay, so that's about controlling the labels themselves by using the two functions xlab and ylab. Okay, now suppose you don't want the labels to be shown at all. Right, you want to eliminate the labels for whatever reason then you say xlab null and ylab null or either of them. You want to eliminate one label, keep the other, that's fine, you can do that. The point is the way to eliminate the label is by using null. Now you may think, why don't I just say xlab open quote close quote. Okay. Now that is different from the label being null. When you say xlab open quote close quote, you're saying I want the label to be the empty string, which means that your plot will take up the space for the label except that the label will be blank. But if you did xlab null, then there is no x-axis label and therefore what space would have been taken up for the label is now taken up by the plot. The plot is slightly bigger because of that. Okay, it's a subtle different, but, uh, difference but it's there. So I just thought you should be aware of it. Okay, so you want to get rid of the labels, pass null as the argument to xlab and ylab and that will do the job. Okay, so uh, you can't say xlab na or ylab na. That doesn't work because if you do xlab na or ylab na then literally na shows up as the label. Okay, so the correct way to eliminate label is to put null. Okay, so the result is this. There is no x-axis label, there is no y-axis label and in fact if you plot with xlab null and if you also plot with xlab equals open quote close quote you will see the difference right with, with open quote close quote the plot will be slightly shorter right because there is some space that it takes up for the label which it doesn't take up if you put null okay all of this only if you want to eliminate the label altogether okay of course we've already seen that you can swap the axis by uh, this is what you get when you do by default we are plotting the bar plot of the diamonds data set by cut and you know that when you do a bar plot it simply counts the number of occurrences of that particular value in the data set and of course this has to be a discrete variable not a continuous variable so it will be typically a factor or a character variable and that's what you see okay now many times when you have bars especially bars indicating counts it's useful to have the counts occur on the uh, on the x-axis and the names occur on the y-axis. This is especially true if you have many bars. If you have many bars what will happen is that these uh, the labels of the different categories that are being plotted they'll start running against running into each other. Okay. In this case it's not happening because there are only five different types of cut and the cut names themselves are actually quite short so they don't start overlapping on each other. If especially in bar charts uh, if overlapping is going to occur then it's a good idea to flip the axis and the way to do that as you've already seen is to use the function coord flip. 
okay then the x and y axis for display purposes are turned around okay but the mapping of x and y doesn't change as i have shown here right so here i've got uh, uh, x x x lab is cut of diamond okay just to amplify it i gave a label to the x axis and i did quad flip right so even though i'm saying the x axis label is cut of diamond it occurs on the y axis okay that is because the basic plot is really the plot the original plot with cut of diamond on the x axis and uh, the counts on the y axis it's only for display purposes because of coordinate flipped coordinates that what is actually the x axis is appearing on the y axis okay so mapping and so on still go by what you do originally coord flip has no effect on what you map to x and y axis okay so this is purely for display purposes it does everything and then flips it around just for display okay now incidentally going back to a point that i was making in the earlier slide here i said that when these when the number of bars becomes too big or when the labels of the thing that you're plotting are themselves quite long and therefore they start overlapping with each other and that is when i suggested one solution is to go for flipping the coordinates the other solution is actually to rotate these the labels themselves and plot them in an angled way 45 degree angle right so fair would be 45 degrees at a 45 degree angle so the potential for overlap reduces considerably right because the the space that it takes up lengthwise is reduced if it's made 45 degrees or even more it could be made 60 degrees or even 90 degrees if it if that makes sense okay now uh, ggplot provides for doing all of that it's just that i have not discussed that specific aspect in the lecture but you know if you google it you will find how to do that so that's another option as well when this happens okay so we've looked at this this is just highlighting the fact that coord flip doesn't affect how you map things x axis is still the x axis y axis is still the y axis this is just happening for display purposes okay now sometimes you may want to reverse the item order like for example again if we go back to uh, to this original plot in the original plot we read from left to right so we are reading fair good very good premium ideal okay now when this is flipped around we tend to read from top to bottom and it so happens that if you read from top to bottom you read it in a different order right you start with ideal premium etc 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 right if of course in this particular case it doesn't really matter uh, you know in what order you read these things okay so long as it's in some meaningful order fair to ideal or ideal to fair doesn't really matter but there might be situations when you want people to read this in a specific order right so if you if you want if you are reading this left to right you should be reading that top to bottom and getting the same sequence you're not getting the same sequence here okay so how do we do that that's what is the next thing is reversing the item order okay now reversing the item order is just one example of controlling the item order you might want to control the item order and handle it in many different ways so for example you may want to order it by count of what it's showing okay now those are things i'm not discussing right now those we'll be encountering later in the course so i just thought that those things we'll discuss later but for now i just want to show you how to reverse the item levels okay so uh, gg plot diamonds aesthetic cut it's the same old bar plot from before coordinates have been flipped right because the we want to reverse the items may only because flipping the coordinates has changed around the order so here we are using the function x lim which is the limits of the x axis okay reverse of levels of diamonds dollar cut okay diamonds dollar cut is a factor it has levels because it's a factor and by default it's the ordering has been done in fact it's an ordered factor inside the actual data store data uh, data frame and currently it has been plotted by default in the order in which the factors are we are saying plot them in the reverse order of the factors so now you get this plot so now when you read from top to bottom it's exactly the same as when you read from left to right okay in this particular example again i emphasize it this doesn't matter 
but if it matters this is how you can take care of it okay of course we've already seen geom jitter right and uh, you can control uh, till now we've just used geom jitter with its default values you can control how much of jittering is possible so in this case we are seeing jit width is 0 0.25 that is the random noise that is going to be added will be uh, up to 0 0.25 okay that's the amount of vertical and horizontal jitter okay so now we can control the axis limits in fact we already saw an example of using x limb okay now here what we are saying is in the instead of seeing the plot for all the three levels of the x-axis for whatever reason we want to see only two of the levels okay so we are saying ggplot mpg drive on the x-axis highway mileage on the y-axis the drive values are front wheel drive rear wheel drive and four wheel drive those three bars we are saying for whatever reason show us only the values for uh, on the x-axis for front wheel drive and rear wheel drive forget about the four wheel drive okay and also for the y-axis show me only the values which are between 20 and 30 okay right now the values span a much larger range okay so now the way in which this works when you control the x-axis or the y-axis through the functions xlim and ylim the way it works is that the system goes into the data and removes the values that don't corresponding uh, that correspond uh, that don't correspond to the limits that we want okay so it actually filters the data and keeps only the data that satisfies these conditions and then creates a plot okay so you get this plot okay so notice that you see only the front wheel drive and rear wheel drive here and notice that you're only seeing the values between 20 and 30 so clearly it's far fewer values than are here okay and of course there are three lines here there are only two here okay so this is one way by which you can filter the plot in some ways you you want to see a plot only for certain x and y ranges okay now in this particular case uh, this happens to be just uh, the basic effect of uh, seeing fewer values than are shown here okay so in this particular example this is this has the same effect as zooming the graph into a particular area okay not really zooming because you're seeing uh, uh, yeah in this case you can say it's zooming that basically we are zooming into a part of this region okay some something here that's what we are doing okay of course as expected there are fewer points now sometimes what we want to do also is to control the axis limits uh, and again we are plotting only for front wheel drive and rear wheel drive we have taken out the thing about the uh, the y-axis limits I, I don't know if I actually took it out because it's still saying it removed 139 rows so I think it's the y limb is still there it's just that it's not showing up in my code here okay so you see this the important point is that data got filtered okay so now here we are looking at suppose you want to affect only one end of the axis and not the other end in other words I want the y limit to go up to 30 but I don't want to particularly put any constraint on its lower limit okay in that case you can just say na in which case it will retain whatever the earlier lower limit was okay and then it will go up to 30 that's the idea here so you can specify uh, uh, another important point is remember in the earlier case when we did x limb and y limb we got a warning message about data being cut off okay now remember again I think this particular code is missing this next line that should be as it was in the previous slide but the point is you get a warning message saying it removed some of the rows again what I'm emphasizing here is the fact that when you put x limb and y limb and you restrict the data in some way what is going to happen is that it's going to eliminate the data and then create the plot okay and then it's going to give you the warning message if you want to eliminate the warning message then you can put an na.rm equals true as always okay if you do that you don't get a warning message but you see the same plot as before okay and I'm emphasizing here that you use NA 
to uh, set only one of the limits and leave the other limit to as it happens to be, right? Which is whatever is there in the data, anything on the lower limit is acceptable.